We do not want that to deter patients or deter anyone from being able to have access to this medicine that changes their quality of life. I mean, when I tell you that I have seen so many patients go from taking 40 pills a day to one, to not being able to get out of bed, to now they can do whatever they would like to do. This is life-saving treatment. This is quality treatment. We do not want to restrict that. But that being said, however, the six-month period makes it so that doctors can track their patients, they can guide their patients. And we talk about spending money at the dispensaries. You know, these dispensaries, they work very well with patients trying to make sure that it is accessible as possible. But having guidance from that doctor is also very important every six months to say, hey, is this working for you? Is this cost effective? Is this health effective? And checking in to make sure that they really are able to utilize this medicine to the best of its benefit. And without something like, and let's say we do it every year, let's say that we have the annual every year, building that patient um, relationship and making sure that, you know, they can ask their doctors, like every single time I sit down and I meet with a patient, I am going through everything with them. Hey, is this working for you? Do you feel like this is too much? Do you feel like this is too little? It is a crucial part to monitor them and to get that data because as you all know, here in the States, we do not have a ton of research on this. Anything that we can get where, like we were talking about with those HIPAA rules, but making sure that we're getting the data will help doctors, will help students. This will make it so that we are making sure we are doing this safe. We are being the leaders in Georgia. Georgia has a huge potential right now to be the leaders. And especially when we talk about, um, you know, these other points of making sure that they can mail the card. Florida already has that. Florida is mailing their cards. Florida is not making that, putting up that roadblock for patients. And when we talk about, you know, um, the other parts of the bill where we want doctors to be educated, you know, when you go to your physicians for any other medication, they are educated on those medications to be able to tell you, hey, this is your condition. This may work better for you than this. Of course, there's never a perfect, you know, everyone's body is different. But being able to have that guidance from a physician who knows what they're talking about because they've had medical education, CME is super important. Why shouldn't we do that for cannabis? This is something that we could do correctly here in Georgia to build that block, to set that example for the South, where we actually take care of our patients in a way that they're not running around going, well, where do I get my card? Who do I talk to? These doctors, which, you know, there are doctors who are certifying patients in the state of Georgia who are not in the state of Georgia. Let's bring this back to Georgia. Let's maybe implement that into this bill where, you know, we are making it so that doctors in Georgia are the ones certifying our Georgia patients only. These are all very, very crucial points. And as I have served patients throughout the years since 2019, this is something that has been brought up to me consistently. And the other part of the education is, you know, a lot of questions that I will get is, what is the law? What can I do before the dispensaries existed? Where do I go? How do I get my medicine? This needs to be safe. And we have the opportunity to do that now with Botanical Sciences Truly and the other dispensaries that will soon be to come. We have an opportunity to do something really beautiful here in Georgia. And um, I really appreciate y'all listening to this bill today. I really appreciate y'all listening to me and letting me speak on behalf of my patients. Um, and I am happy. And I, one more thing I want to touch on about the, when you asked about the card, when does it actually be renewed? It is renewed every two years. Yes, Cheryl does a wonderful job at making sure that they see their patients, they take care of their patients. But like I said, you know, doctors are not required to do that right now with this, you know, two year renewal. They may, there's something floating around, but I haven't really seen it nailed down that it, there is an annual. And that is crucial, just like with any other medicine. So if I can take any, any, any thoughts, any questions, any comments, any concerns, I'd love to speak more if you let me. <laughs> um, we do have question from Secretary Earhart. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> and um, just a couple of quick questions. Um, and just as a reminder, this is sort of the purpose of subcommittee. You know, it's often time where we ask the questions. And so my questions are in no way intended to be negative on the bill. I just want to make sure that we all understand. Um, 
So you say that, um, so currently that the cards, and I don't know a whole lot about the cannabis mm -hmm. cards, but you said they're valid for two years. And what happens at the end of two years right now? Like how are they renewed? So at the end of two years, either the doctor or the patient has to reach out to each other in some way. We always reach out to our um, patients and say, hey, it's time for you to renew. And at that point, they will have another appointment. <laughs> now, this is just what we do. And this is what I believe the state requires, that they have another appointment, that they have a check-in. Does the state not work? Um, that they have a check-in and um, that they are, but there's nothing that says they have to look, I mean, they have to look at medication interactions. We want to make sure that's absolutely a thing because that is something that before we didn't necessarily see all doctors doing that they would just give, and especially these doctors that are out of state, they'll give you the card. We have patients who actually come to us from other doctors who have seen other doctors, have gotten certified from other doctors, but need guidance. And so they will come to us and they'll say, okay, well, the doctor gave me my card. They didn't go over my medication interactions. They didn't do anything else. What do I do? But to answer your question, um, right now they do have that annual visit where they do have to speak with them, but there's no like exact to my knowledge right. regulation on exactly what they need to find out during that right. appointment. And, and again, I'm just trying to unpack. So yeah, I fully please, understand. Please. Um, because I, I do know that, um, this wouldn't be necessarily the first time that legislation has been proposed that, um, you know, affects Georgians' lives or, or what they are expected to do um, with the end goal being to obtain data. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not saying that's the main goal. I understand the, yeah. the, the importance of the doctor-patient yeah. relationship, but I've uh, I've certainly seen situations before when, um, and you know, it, it's a it's a just cause. It's you you want to have accurate data, particularly for something that's as new, right, as this is to Georgia. Um, but my I guess my concern or question there would be, you know, are there other scenarios where the state mandates mm -hmm. that doctors must examine patients to renew sub prescriptions? And I'm I'm just comparing this to all other sorts of prescriptions in the state. Mm -hmm you know, should this not be left up to the doctor and the patient? Should we not be leaning into the doctor's discretion and his discernment and his medical training uh, to be able to determine when, you know, I go in for a medication, let's say I need something and, and he'll say, I'm going to follow up with you in 45 days or four months, or if it's a long-term prescription, I guess I'm just wondering about the merit of involving the state to mandate that doctors must uh, perform ex these exams every six months in order to renew a prescription. I don't know that that's occurred. And I, I, I really appreciate um, your thoughts on this. And as far as, you know, collecting data, the main focus I believe here is to make the patient the main focus. And when you talk about, you know, are there medications, other medications where they have to be monitored in such a way, this is still a controlled substance um, and it is still schedule one. Uh, as far as my knowledge, since I do not work with opioids personally, um, but as far as my knowledge, and if there isn't, I'm sure there should be because doctors need to be following that. But, and anyone in here is welcome to let me know if, if you know about this, but um, that there are laws that doctors must monitor their patients when they are on something like an opioid. And since this is, medical cannabis, um, you know, besides the data, making sure that, because with this medication, right, it's to us what we learn in our education. I did about three years of a medical education from Oaksterdam University and the Medical Cannabis Institute and the Holistic Cannabis Academy. And what we learned during that time um, is that, you know, Without this data and without, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm um, oh, sorry, um, <laughs> lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, without this data, you know, and without it being regulated and without us knowing what doctors need to understand is that this medication may not be shown in practice or in research or whatever we do have to be physically addicting, but anything can be psychologically addicting. And it is very important to us that the patients of Georgia are able to utilize this tool, this beautiful tool in a way that they can actually get the results they need and make sure that we are following that patient. And I just don't think based on what I've seen since 2019 with patients coming to us from other doctors, 
that, I mean, I hear you. Yes, we should trust our doctors to have that patient relationship and to follow up. But without it being something that's mandated, and I'm not saying it has to be every six months, that might be too frequent. You know, Florida might be doing that too frequently. Other states that are doing that, and there, there are quite a few other states that do that. Maybe they are doing it too frequently. Maybe that's not needed. But a yearly visit, absolutely needed, especially with the unknowns of this medicine. If that answers your question Thank fully. Thank you. Yeah. Last follow up, and it's really on the mailing issue. Could this be a, I'm wondering why this wasn't put into the original legislation. Um, could it be a, I have no idea, I'm speculating, a, a chain of custody issue uh, that they don't want? Uh, I don't know how many how many medical cannabis cards there are in Georgia. I don't know. Could thousands? Uh, are they, maybe they don't want them floating around in, in the post offices and through the Postal Service? I don't so, yes, I, I, and I completely hear you on that. Um, upon speaking to the Department of Public Health that actually, you know, gives the cards, and just, just so that everyone's aware, um, when you speak about, like, some of these departments of public health are two hours away from patients, um, and some of them do not have cards, and some of them are disabled, or some of them are elderly and cannot move, and then they cannot get their card. Um, and when you speak about it actually being attached to the driver's license, that's interesting because in Florida, they actually can look up your driver's license card at the dispensary where you wouldn't need the card. So that's something actually to look into as well. But with certified mail, if we can have it so that they have to, their ID has to be checked, you know, um, why it wasn't put into the law to begin with, I think that that was an unattended oversight of just, you know, they didn't necessarily, and I, I, I'm speaking from just a place of my opinion, I'm not speaking from, but upon t talking to DPH, it seemed like their biggest concern was that, um, like you just said, floating around, we want to make sure that it's certified. And if other states can do that, if other states can figure that out, I'm sure here in Georgia, we absolutely can as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I appreciate uh, Secretary Earhart's uh, comments about uh, the phys the required uh, physician follow-up, and I was thinking about that relative to other medicines. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, sometimes uh, when my doctor changes my medicine, he'll he or she actually will say, we want you to come back in in three months and let us do a blood test and see how this mm -hmm. is going. Certainly understand that, but it's not mandated by the law that you do that. Uh, also, too, um, of course, with the data and trying to determine the effectiveness of the medicine, et cetera, it sounds like most of the concerns is about the addictive qualities or, or their examples of terrible things that have happened with drug interactions that that you're concerned about. And that may be an unfair question. It's out of nowhere, really. But are there cases where something terrible has happened with somebody doing the low THC medicine as some drug interaction problem? So as far as my knowledge, and when we're talking about low THC, I think that is a very um, important differentiation when we're talking about cannabis. You know, to my knowledge and through the education that I've had and through, you know, obviously working with patients, um, no one, like with other medications like opioids and things like that, people don't die from cannabis.